Okay. So we're going to start from scratch. Uh, we're going to do one more patch. Um, and this time I'm going to choose a square wave. So I'm going to take my square wave and we're going to listen to it dry. Input one. There we go. Okay, so now this time, um, what we're going to do is we're going to modulate the pulse width. So I'm going to bring my pulse width to about the, the mid setting here, right about there. And uh, then I'm going to choose my, my first waveform to be fed into my VCA. Um, let's do hmm, let's do a triangle wave, because we've got some good modulations out of the triangle wave. Let's hear what it sounds like dry going into pulse width CV. Uh, we'll do pulse width CV number two. Let's do number two. Okay, so that's triangle wave LFO number two going into pulse width CV number two of our VCO. And I can adjust how much of that is coming in by bringing it down. And then no modulations coming in, or I can bring it up. There, my maximum amount of modulations coming in. I can adjust the frequency of my LFO. Bring it down. Have it slowly build up pulse width modulation, or the pulse width. Or I can bring it up and have that pulse width modulation happening a little bit faster. So I'm liking that kind of frequency right there. So now I'm going to unpatch the modulation going into there. And I'm going to go in through the VCA. So I'm going to patch into audio in one. There we go. And I'm going to patch out from audio out back into pulse with CV2. And I have no signal because my gain is all the way down. But if I want to verify that it is actually there, I can bring my gain up. there, so I'm going to bring the gain all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to find a control signal that I want to use to bring the volume of my pulse width CV uh, up or down with. So I'm going to choose, let's start with the triangle wave as well, and we'll patch that into CV1. Here we go. So we've got a slow build, and I can bring up the frequency of that a little bit. We're not getting an awful lot of movement, so maybe let's bring up the N1 over here. Let's bring this down a little bit. So if I wanted to add a little bit more excitement to this, I could then take, uh, maybe, let's see, we have this going into CV1. Or no, actually, take that back. We have the triangle wave going into our audio in. That's the signal that's then being fed over to the pulse with CV2. So right now we have our control voltage on our VCA being modulated by LFO number one. So let's take a sine wave and then go into CV number two. Maybe bring up that a little bit. I don't hear an, an excitedly marked change there. And occasionally that'll happen. So let me unpatch that and uh, reassess. Let's try saw wave from over here. Go into CV2. And that's, that's noticeably different, so we'll keep that for now. And 
then let's take an inverted saw from LFO number two right here, and we'll go into audio N2 here. That's doing a strange modulation to the plus with CV2. I'm not going to adjust now my two modulation signals going into my VCA a little bit. I get a flavor of modulation being fed to my pulse with CV2 that I'm happy with. And I can then uh, also change the frequency of LFO number one. part, LFO2 is uh, the one responsible for the modulation signals that are being fed to pulse with CV2. And LFO1 is, let's see, it's changing the VCA here, and it's also changing the VCA here at CV2 of our VCA. And then if I want it even more subtle, I can bring down my pulse with CV2 over here. So I'm going to unpatch that, and then we're back to just straight VCO. And let's hear, just since we're at the end of our segment, what it's going to do to our VCO's pitch. So I'm going to patch it into CV2 here. Because I kind of like this effect that was going on over here. And let's see what happens when we go into pitch. So I'm going to bring up CV2 now. I sound like it. I can say I, li I like that a lot, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. And then I can manually adjust my pulse width. I think maybe it might even be more uh, to my liking if I bring up the octave on my VCO. So we have a fairly nice little modulation going on here. Okay, so now is where our second VCA is going to come in. I'm going to unpatch our VCO. There we go. So we have no sound whatsoever. And I'm going to use my A101-2 in VCA mode to then build up that kind of modulated sound that we have. I'm going to patch it into audio in, and then take my audio out, patch it into here. We hear very little because the amplitude is all the way down. So I'm going to bring it up. And the tone is slightly different, if you noticed, coming straight out from here into the mixer versus coming into the VCA and then into our mixer. Tone is slightly different. Hopefully some of you can hear that. Okay, so now that I have my nice little modulated sound going on, I'm going to take a sine wave from my LFO number one and I'm going to adjust the amplitude of my, uh, my VCA over here. So we have a slowly Fading in, fading out sound. And 
if I want that to happen a little bit faster, of course now it is going to affect my entire modulated my my entire modulated sound. Nice rhythmic kind of pulsing. Sort of dynamically changing type modulated sound. I can adjust the frequency of LFO number two. a different waveform because right now I'm doing a sine wave but let's just as an experiment go into the saw wave of our elephant 2 there we go or I can even go one step further going a little bit off the deep end now since we can't really see the original patch you may have to rewind a lot and figure out where we started but I'm gonna unpatch the I'm gonna patch in the sine wave over here and I'm gonna go into CV number two and then I can just adjust this to taste until I get something that I like Can adjust the frequency of my oscillators. Bring them both all the way to the max. Or pretty close to it. Get some some crazy little bubbling type sounds. It's pretty nice, I like that. So there you go. Some pretty interesting effects that can be had with a VCA. Just the CV2 if I want to. So lots and lots of fun to be had uh, with these particular types of modules. Um, and it's all about experimenting. So with the modulations, I mean, you can get all kinds of crazy combinations. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for this particular segment. Um, in the next segment, we're going to be looking at yet another use for this module here, um, and that's going to be something called amplitude modulation. It's going to be something pretty specific to uh, the A131, since amplitude modulation um, is going to be something that deals with audio signals. Um, it's going to be where <coughs> excuse me, a uh, audio rate signal modulates another audio signal, but via a VCA. So stay tuned for that. Um, fairly certain that it's going to be an interesting demonstration, as this one was, or at least I hope it eventually got there. Uh, we're a little slow to start with the basics, but uh, please stay tuned and keep on patching. <laughs>